All right, we're back for our final game of the night. We've got Unknown going up against Pain Gaming. If you're just joining us, we're covering the Dota 2 Canada Cup. We're Radiant in Season 6. This is Group B. And like I said, it's our final game of the night. We're uh, halfway with the conclusion of this. We'll be halfway through Group B. Unknown will have played all their games so far. They're sitting uh, sitting in a pretty good spot at 2-0. and seconds remaining. They've won uh, both their games so far. And... Five seconds They're looking remaining. to uh, potentially make it a three-peat here. Pain Gaming trying to to get off to Reserve a good start um, t for their tournament. Radiant we'll see if they're going to be able to uh, contest Unknown because they've been playing some pretty good Dota so far. And they're definitely... Uh, they've put themselves in a pretty good spot to advance out of the group. Of course, we've got four teams in each group. We've already seen Team Leviathan. And uh, last game we saw T Show. And uh, then Radiant we got these two teams, pick. Pain Gaming and Un Unknown. Top two out of those four will advance out of the group. Bottom two, that's it. You're done. You're going home. Ended the tournament for you. So before we uh, conclude our last cast, we did ask a trivia question. We asked, What is the national sport of Canada? And it's a, maybe a little bit of a trick question. Uh. It was actually said in chat, it's not remaining. hockey? Well, first of all, it was lacrosse Five um, in like the 1800s or something like that. Um, it was created as our, Reserve or defined time. as our national sport of Canada. As lacrosse was pretty much became the game it was, um, or it is now in Canada. It was invented in Canada. It was played by uh, um, natives. Um... We were talking a little bit about uh, the Iroquois and the Algonquins and uh, a bunch of native tribes. But uh, yeah, so they played a bunch of lacrosse and lacrosse was a, a game that kind of developed in Canada. And um, it was for the longest time our national sport and then I'm 94, 95, something like that. Um, Parliament in Canada decided, you know what? This isn't fair. Hockey is our game. So we're going to make lacrosse the national summer sport of Canada and hockey is going to be the national winter sport of Canada so we actually have two winter uh, two national sports both lacrosse and um, hockey team pick and it doesn't actually it's not defined whether it's box lacrosse or field lacrosse um, I actually used to play box lacrosse that was a lot of fun and um, I'm actually I'm from Mississauga, I'm not from Toronto, it's a neighboring city, and uh, one of the probably best lacrosse players of all time, the, the leading scorer in the National Lacrosse League, um, John Ten Tavares, not the same remaining. John Tavares that um, we know from the NHL, um, but uh, he's from Mississauga, or well he's from Toronto, but he uh, used to teach in a uh, school Reserve actually close time. by me in Mississauga, he was a high school teacher, and uh, while he was still a player, and uh, he taught at a school called Philip Pocock, and I believe he taught math. But um, I actually have some friends that went to that school, and uh, they used to play on the lacrosse team, the, the girls' lacrosse team. So they got a coach. They got coached by him, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's the story about uh, <laughs> uh, the national sports of Canada. I also asked about the national um, animal of Canada, which is well, I guess no surprise, it's the beaver. But uh, people Radiant would like it actually back. to be changed to the polar bear, but right now it is the beaver, and you can't really uh, can't really argue. I mean, a beaver's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. But uh, so are polar bears. So you know, maybe maybe there's something there. Seconds. Considering we also have, I think, one of the largest populations, or actually, we are, we are the country Five with the seconds. largest population Radiant. of polar bears. The vast majority pop of uh, polar bears in the world or in uh, Canada. Reserve time. In the, the Great White North. But that was a little long-winded. I got into this cast a little bit late, so we are way behind in the draft. So, what do we got? Pain Gaming on the Dire side there on the top of our screen. Shadowfiend, Alk, Undying, Dying and Templar back. Assassin were their bands. Then they picked up Winter Wyvern, Tusk, Wind Ranger, and Spirit Breaker. On the bottom side of the screen, we've got Unknown representing the Radiant side. Their bands, Darkseer, Doom, Viper, Lena, and now Ember Spirit. Their picks, Slargar, Gyrocopter, Queen of Pain, and Ancient Apparition. 
So let's cover unknown Five lanes first. Remaining. Looks like it's going to be Queen of Pain in the mid lane, Gyrocopter in the safe lane, Slardar in the off lane, and Ancient Apparition probably in the safe lane with that Gyrocopter. Don't really see him pairing up with Slardar in the off lane. They don't really have the best synergy. And Ancient Apparition typically is more suited to the, the defensive role, um, in the, at least in the early laning phase. For our dire side, things are a little bit different. We're not exactly sure whether the Tusk or the Spirit Breaker are going to be off lane. We can assume the Wind Ranger is going to be mid, and the Winter Wyvern is going to be the defensive support on the team. Um, where he's going to be laning, probably in the safe lane, um, defending whatever safe lane carry they choose to pick up. Radiant but we don't know pick. whether it's the Tusk offlane and the Spirit Breaker roaming or the Spirit Breaker offlane and the Tusk roaming. Both are completely viable. So we'll have to see how they choose to uh, to lane that. And maybe Pain Gaming actually has a preference on how they how they do that. Maybe they just really like playing Tusk offlane or really like playing Spirit Breaker offlane or have one roaming, for example, and they just lead to uh, one of those. I don't know Pain Ten Gaming well enough to remaining. say whether... Uh, they pretty much just ha always run the Tusk as a position remaining. four, and they've got someone who can play it really well. I don't, I unfortunately don't know them well enough to uh, time. to make any kind of uh, judgment call on that. The final ban from Paint Gaming was Dazzle, so getting rid of one of those strong defensive supports would have given them a little bit more minus armor as well to synergize with the Slardar, amplify damage. It's also a hero that would have paired well with the Slardar in the offlane if they chose to run 2-1-2, which I imagine they probably will, given that there's a, there's a lot of roaming potential coming out from Pain Gaming. The defensive tri lane isn't really going to make much sense. You're just going to fall behind in XP. And... Dire team pick. Huh. What? Clockwork. Clockwork. Okay. Huh. So does this mean we got the lanes completely wrong? Ten seconds remaining. That means that we've got Clockwork off lane. Five seconds remaining. Queen of Pain we can assume is mid. And is this then a safe lane slaughter and a support gyrocopter? Time. I I Definitely don't see them having Slarder and Clockwork in the offlane together. Seconds remaining. What is this draft? It's definitely throwing Pain Gaming off. Five seconds They're taking remaining. all their reserve time here before they draft. Are they even going to get a pick in? Juggernaut. They will. It's going to be Juggernaut. Weird. It's... Is a support Slardar an option? I don't know. I, I'm I'm a little caught off guard with this one guys. I don't I don't really know what's going on here. seconds remaining it's a little weird it's a little weird five seconds i mean remaining. support gyro used to be a thing a long ways back and look they're they're switching they're switching who's playing what i don't i don't know if they were prepared for this but they've gone with it so we're gonna see what they're gonna be able to do prepare for battle on the radiant side we're gonna have team unknown z3 is gonna be playing their slardar Umaru-chan is going to be playing the Gyrocopter. Greedy Babe is going to be playing the Clockwork. Eagle is going to be playing the Queen of Pain. And Serengay is going to be playing the Ancient Apparition. I am so confused. Pain Gaming on our dire side. We've got C4T. I'm going to call him Cat. He's going to be playing the Winter Wyvern. Pepita is going to be playing the Wind Ranger. 4 dr is going to be playing the Juggernaut. Tavo is going to be playing the Spirit Breaker, and Peko is going to be playing the Tusk. Apparently, Eagle speaking a little bit of German, I believe that was. But thirty uh, seconds to battle. 
Speaking of pimp muckle. <laughs> But yeah, we are, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a different game than I think we're used to seeing. We're going to have boots first on the gyrocopter, which means we're going to have some aggressive stuff coming out from him. Maybe. The Maybe. Battle <laughs> he doesn't have uh, any way to regen any of his mana, so Every this is... Helped. What? <laughs> I mean, Slargar is going to be the one that I think is going to be doing the aggressive stuff. He doesn't really need mana regen if he's going to be roaming around. But this is de definitely something different than we typically see. I'm not really sure if I like it. I think the Slargar is going to end up falling behind in levels. He's not going to have those levels in Amplify Damage. And I actually, I mentioned last game about a hero like Slargar where you get the Blink Dagger and uh, Midas doesn't really make sense on it. Maybe, maybe it does this game. Maybe it does. I I still don't see it. z uh Well, he's going to lose a lot of damage, or a lot of health here, as he took a lot of right-click damage there, as they kind of went on Pepita, but Pepita just, pop, just popped the Wind Run and didn't really have to worry about too much damage. And then with the Winter Wyvern coming in, it was actually the Slaughter that took the majority of the damage. Denied. So what do we got in terms of lanes? We've got Ancient Apparition and Gyrocopter in the safe lane for Unknown. They're going up against the offlane Spirit Breaker. Mid lane, we just saw the Queen of Pain going up against the Wind Ranger, and we've had some heroes moving around. The Slardar is going to be roaming around, and apparently the Tusk is going to be roaming around as well. That leaves us in the top lane where we've got the Clockwork offlane, and Juggernaut is going to be safe lane with, well, Winter Wyvern as he's made his way back up here, and now Zephyr is going to be up here. As this is really, really weird what they're doing with this uh, Slardar, but maybe they're going to make it work. We're going to have that Tusk starting his roam on the top. We've got the spin to win from 4DR, and that's going to be our first blood. As the Tusk actually getting the last hit on the clockwork there. And so far, not working out for Unknown, but I think it's a little too early to say that. Eagle jumping forward, getting the Shadow Strike off on Pepita. But there's no chance of a kill there. Pepito. We'll uh, camp that illusion rune for for the Wind Ranger, so Pepita is going to be able to come up there and take that. That'll help with last us. hitting and harassing in the mid lane. But still no bottle for the Wind Ranger. I believe it's coming in on the career. Nope, just a healing salve right now. As Pepita's up at 300 gold, and Eagle almost has his, so he's a little bit ahead of the Wind Ranger right now. We've got some damage going in on Tavo there. I'm a little bit surprised that we actually have this Boots first from the Gyrocopter. To me, that means that maybe Unknown were really expecting some kind of aggro lane. Which still doesn't make sense to me with them playing the support Slardar. They could have easily just backed out of... Maybe they decided they wanted the Slardar supporting early on. And they, they could have easily just backed out of it with their final pick. Because it's not like Clockwork created some situation where they'd easily win a lane. That Slara wouldn't have won if there was an aggro try. <laughs> it's just weird. It's really weird. I'm not really sure the thought process behind it, but... I guess we'll, we'll just have to accept it. Toss going to snowball forward onto Eagle, but he's able to blink back towards his tier 1. And that... Uh, doesn't disjoint this snowball, but outranges it. We have a charge on to Greedy here on the clockwork. The tusk is nearby as well. Coming in. And here we go. They're already leading with the tusk. And they're going to go on to this clockwork, not putting the cogs down just yet. Now he will be able to, and that'll push them back. Just barely doesn't trap his Slardar, but their mid laner, that's the one that's in trouble, as Eagle is going to get the kill on to Windranger. 
as Unknown get their first kill of the game. And Zifri, he's not done. He's looking for more. He's going to go on the Tusk. He's going to get charged up by Tavo. Eagle's going to blink on in. A couple more right clicks needed. There we go. That was the last one. Now Zifri getting quite low. He'll get one more stun off onto Tavo. And then he's going to have to try and find a place in the trees to hide and get out of uh, line of sight from this Wind Ranger, uh, sorry, Winter Wyvern, and he does so. And then they just turn around, smack him a few times, and the Winter Wyvern goes down. Now Tavo still somehow alive, and he will go down. Last auto attack coming out from Eagle there, but maybe they've gone too far. Greedy gonna get trapped by the Ice Shards and getting spun on by 4DR. He'll go down. So in the end, Unknown actually comes out ahead in that exchange. They end up four to three in this in terms of this game. They managed to get three kills there, only losing two. Gold swing, very, very slight advantage. 160 gold for unknown when it's all Radiant's said and done. But maybe it's not attack. done. Pain wants Dyer's more. Peiko snowballing on forward, but snowballing to his death. There was some TPs coming in to try and help him out, but they arrived a little bit too late. Meanwhile, in the top lane, 40 are diving past the tower, going on to Greedy, who has popped the battery salt. But 40 are threatening. He is level 6 on that Juggernaut, which means if he can get that Clockwork alone, away from the Creep Wave, and he gets that Omni Slash up, he's going to be able to bring down that Clockwork. He's got uh, not enough mana showing right now, but he's got 6 charges on his stick. 6 charges on his Magic Stick, and on top of that he's going to have the Enchanted man Mango, if needed, to, uh, to spin on the end of that ultimate. We have a battle for the top rune. Pepita realizing, oh no, maybe I don't want to be here. Tries to back out in time. Still gets stunned. Doesn't get the bounty rune. And almost tries to TP out, but Eagle's there with the sonic wave. Bottom lane, we're going to have call down coming up from the gyrocopter. But he didn't know the tusk was there. And then the tusk comes snowballing forward. He'll trap the gyrocopter in the ice shards. Oh, the rocket barrage will do enough to bring down the spirit breaker. But it's not going to save the gyrocopters. He's going to go down. It's a one for one trade, but definitely advantage pain on that trade. Serengeti's going to place that observer ward. Just going to give them some vision. I'll switch over to, uh, not that one. I'll switch over to radiant vision for just a second so we can see exactly how much vision it does grant us here. So it'll somewhat protect the, um, protect them from spirit breaker charges leaving the bottom lane, which is what they're really worried about but it only does so when he backs up in the lane. If he's still pretty far forward in the lane, then they're not gonna see some of those charges leaving the bottom lane. And to be honest, right now, we're probably not even gonna see the Spirit Breaker stay down there. As uh, this is a lane for the Tusk to catch up in levels, as the Spirit Breaker's gonna be charging around. We're seeing just a little bit of an example of that as he's charged the Clockwork in the top lane. So he's trying to chase, but Cogs will block them off once again. 40 are able to snake, oh, almost snake through the Cogs, and he'll actually get pushed up onto the high ground, forcing to TP out now, and now Cat's in trouble. He's got no one there to help him. Eagle's chasing him. Rocket will fly in, do a little bit of damage, but Eagle, once again, has that last hit with the right click. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Z-Free keeping Pepita honest. Making sure that he's not able to, to go into the jungle there, forcing him back out. Tavo continuing to charge. This time he's going down to the bottom lane to so charge on the gyrocopter. And that's really what this observer ward's trying to do. Protect the gyrocopter from the charges. And they've even placed another one in the mid lane, doing the same thing. Trying to see where this spirit breaker is going to be charging. A lot of, uh, ooh, we're going to get a slither and crush onto Tavo here, but we won't see a kill. But a lot of uh, people make the mistake um, of warding incorrectly against the spirit breaker and they try to say okay well we've got our gyrocopter down here farming we need an observer ward here to see when he's coming or you know we need an observer ward here to see when he's charging into our jungle so we can see him coming but that's wrong you want your observer wards as close to the dire base as you almost can because you want to see where he's going to be charging his past is going to be charging through Dyer's and the further away from you attack. that you can place your observer wards and effectively, the closer to the Spirit Breaker, the more chance you have of catching him when he's charging with your vision. And if you see him leaving here on a certain trajectory through an Observer Ward here, you know where he's going. So you can play accordingly and have enough time to maybe potentially even set up a bait and have him charge into his death. And maybe you're probably baiting in more than just him. So having these deep wards are very, very valuable against the Spirit Breaker. 
Dyer's bottom First tower, tower goes down of the fall. game. It's the bottom tier one. Eagle Radiance gets the last top hit there. He's off to a great start on this Queen of Pain. 4, 0, and 3. 42 Radiant and 18 CS. Are fortified. Things are looking pretty good Radiant's for the Queen of Pain. Not the attack. highest farmer in the game. That's Gyrocopter by a long shot. As Pain get their first tower of the game. Oh, Eagle misses a sonic wave. Just didn't have the range on that to catch the jug as he was backing after taking that tower. Had he hit that, I'm not sure if he even would have still followed up. It wouldn't have killed the juggernaut, and he would have had to blink forward and then scream of pain, and I don't know if he actually knew that uh, the Winter Wyvern was close by, but you have to assume someone's behind that jug. Well, 10 minute rune, it's gonna be a regen for the Queen of Pain. As looks like Unknown is, is grouping up here. They've already got three heroes in the mid lane, and they've got two leaving the bottom lane. They're going to be smoked up at the bottom rune. And yeah, they're definitely they're looking for looking to make a play here on the mid. They've got this division from the Observer where Call Down is going to potentially land on two, but the Snowball's there to save them from it. But maybe it's just pulled them into a compromising position as they're both going to go down immediately. Jug Tiki's on in, gets the Omni Slash off. Now he's spinning on a bunch of heroes. Will he be able to bring one down? He will. It's the Gyrocopter. But will he be able to get on out? I don't think he will. He's going to get caught with the Slytherin Crush, and they finish him off. Dyer's Meanwhile, on the back line, Eagles going on to Tavo. We'll get the sat Sonic, or, um, whatever the heck this thing's called. Shadow Strike off onto Tavo. Ice Blast flew through, but it was off the mark. Now Greedy going to hook shot on in, and Pepita's going to try to run for her life. With the Wind Run popped, we'll get stunned by the Slytherin Crush. But but Pico has respawned, Teepee's on in, catches the Queen of Pain from behind with the Ice Shards. And wow, they've gone a little bit too deep on that one unknown, and they got punished for it as Pain. We're still early on into this game. Pain had uh, some heroes respawning, Teepee'd in behind, and then Unknown was just kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere on that one. Take a quick look at the show fight recap. In the end, Pain actually loses one more hero than Unknown. And... Uh, Pain actually still coming out ahead in terms of gold, getting about four, uh, just over 450 gold, or just about 450 gold in their favor. Switch on to our net worth and see how uh, the laning phase and all these kills, 19 kills and 12 minutes into this game, uh, how it's resulted in the net Dyer's worth fluctuations for these heroes. We've got attack. Gyrocopter leading the way, so Amaru Chan sitting at 5600 net worth, and then it's the Queen of Pain Eagle at 5,200. Pretty much tied with 40R on the Juggernaut. Radiance then Pepita falling a little bit behind, 3,900 on the Wind Ranger. Uh, Clockwork actually pretty close to the mid laner from Pain as Greedy sitting at 3,300. And the Roaming Around Tusk, 3,200. And what's even uh, more Dyer's strange, the Roaming Around Slardar sitting at 3K Radiance net worth. Bottom tower is under so attack. far, it's. I mean, Unknown's making it work, I guess. He's got Tranquils and now sitting at 1,200 gold. Um, I'm guessing he's going to go... Actually, I, I can't even predict whether he's going to go for the Force Staff or the Blank. He could um, probably Radiant's get the Force Staff a little bit easier. Under attack. But he doesn't really have... Actually, most of his gold is actually unreliable. Radiance bottom tower has so fallen. maybe if he if he's gonna die, Dyer's he might actually choose to go with the attack. the four staff. But uh, I imagine he's gonna attempt tower. to save up for the blink dagger here. Ice blast gonna come in. Will it catch? Cat it will. Hookshot's also gonna catch him, and that's a dead winter wyvern. So unknown's finding these kills, and now the ping's coming out to uh, to defend this mid tier one. I'm not really sure if Payne should defend it. Sorry, on pretty low Radiant's HP. Down at 332. Z-Free getting Dyer's an amp damage off on this, uh, this Wind Ranger. Oh, Shackle not latching. They will get the Dyer's Tier 1 tower. tower. Charge coming in from Tavo. He's going to stun up the Eagle. Power shot's there to finish him off. Snowball coming forward onto the Slaughter. Omni Slash there as well. Uh, Z-Free is going to go down. Pico getting the kill. Marichan, farming up in the jungle. We're 14 minutes into this game. He's doing pretty good in terms of his uh, his farm. He's uh, gone uh, Radiance middle tower the kind of new attack. meta build of uh, phase boots, drums, 
and Aquila and then building into an S and Y. Or maybe not. He does have an Ogre Club, but I guess it doesn't have to be an S and Y. It could just Radiant be straight BKB. Because he's already sitting on 1300 gold, 1400 gold now. Hook shot in from Greedy. Not going to latch on any heroes. It's going to be right onto the catapult. Trying to put himself in a good position to get Cogs down, but not going to actually um, cast him in the end. Cat will actually have to freeze himself. Z Free stunning him up with the Slytherin Crush. Eagle finishing him off with a right click once again. Z Free and Eagle, they're not done. They're going forward. They want more. The Tusk will snowball onto the Queen of Pain. And Eagle, now very, very low HP. He'll go down. Shackle will latch. Z Free to a tree, and the Snarder goes down. Is once again unknown, just going a little bit too far. And pain quick to punish them for it. As we quickly cycle through our heroes here, Slar sitting at 1200, didn't buy anything before he died there. So he's still saving up for that blink dagger. He's not bailing out and going for the four staff. And we've got a mithril hammer picked up by Umaru Chan. So he's going to rush right into a BKB on the gyrocopter. Sensing that there's going to be a lot of fighting early on and he wants his BKB to be effective. Greedy almost have has Blade Mail as his first pickup on the clockwork. We've got Eagle still working towards an Orchid. And is that, uh, okay, it's going to be a quarter staff flying in for him. So he's still quite a ways out from completing that. Definitely falling behind in terms of his farm. His net worth down at 6k right now. He's, he was doing well, but he just didn't have this CS to back up uh, kind of his record. He was, what was this, 4-0-2 I think at Dyer's one point. He's now 5-3-4. and four. So that kind of transition out of the laning phase just hasn't worked for him. He's played just a little bit too aggressive, I think. And he's been uh, picked off kind of every time he's done so. Tavos found Greedy up in the top lane. Pepita's going to come in. Shackle shot, not going to latch. And Pico's going to be there anyway. So Clockwork will go down. But now Zephyr's going to come in to try and help out. He'll get the Slytherin Crush on the two as they were trapped into those cogs. Umaru Chan comes in from the other side with the call down. But now they're just going to try to run away. And Maru Chan's getting charged. And this should be an easy shackle for Papita. And he will land it onto the uh, latch him to the tree. But that's a one tanky gyrocopter. He's going to live. And he's actually not going to live. He's going to die as the ice shards flew and dealt enough damage that the urn ticked him down from the spear breaker. As unknown is just getting completely demolished here in this team fight. As they've lost four heroes, actually having their clockwork respawning. Maybe he's going to TP on in and try to help Eagle maybe get another kill. As Pain, well, not many of them are even on low HP. They're they're all pretty healthy right now. So I don't even think a pickoff's even possible. But another 1,700 gold swing in favor of Pain. As they're just they're just getting the better end of these fights. Radiance middle tower it seems that attack. Unknown typically leads Radiance with uh, tower a pick off on one hero, but then they just go too far and they get punished for it. That time, it actually led with Pain uh, leading, getting a kill, and then we'll just kind of snowballing from there. As they just kept picking off some heroes on the side of Unknown. It cost them a few of their own, but still coming out uh, definitely ahead in the exchange. There's that Orchid finished for Eagle. 1500 gold on the Slardar. Still no BKB finished yet. We were looking at our Ancient Apparition before all that fighting started, so let's take a look at him now. It just has the urn sitting on 600, almost 700 gold. Brown boots. Probably still going to go for the Midas this game. We look at our dire side. Cat has the Arcane boots on the Winter Wyvern. There's the Blade Mail finished by the clock. Uh, Wind Ranger. Electing not to go off there. The Blink Dagger going to go straight into the Agonims. That was Point Booster on hand in her 2,000 gold in pocket. And uh, Pepita and 40R killing Rocher. 40R electing to go with the Battle Fury. Oh no. Serengay. I'm not really sure why Serengay face checked that. He yeah, has points in Ice Vortex, which has a pretty damn big cast range. I mean, look at no it. Died here. Look at how big that cast range is. He could have cast an Ice Vortex in the Roach Pit from, like, here. Not sure why he face-checked. And he, like, he basically face-checked and then Ice Blasted in their face. I, I don't know. It was honestly just a feed. Uh, I, 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 I don't see any other reason beyond that, unless... Maybe he wasn't checking Roche at all. He was walking in because he wanted to get a ward up on the pillar. That makes sense. Still a very, very dangerous play. 
and that's a very highly probable observer ward to get countered if you're going to place it like that. A little bit of a questionable play coming up from the Ancient Apparition. He gets punished for it. And Pain get that Roche. And the Aegis goes on to 40R, who, like I said, has picked up a Battle, for, Battle Fury. He's got his phase as well. He's also got a Blade of Alacrity, so Yash is going to be on the way for him. Spirit Breaker, Tavo. He's got the Urn, Treads. And has also picked up a Robe of the Magi. He's already got Bracers, so I can assume that's going to be Drums for him. And last but not least, our Tusk. He's got uh, his Arcane Boots and a Four Staff. There we go, the support Slardar. Position 4 Slardar has picked up his Blink Dagger. Sitting on level 8. So he'll try to get some uh, some good initiations for his team. I mean, what we may actually see is him being the secondary initiator. Clockwork's going to jump in as the primary initiator. And then uh, the Slardar will just kind of sit back, throwing in amp damage. And then he'll blink in, get a stun off, kind of back out. Re-engage with a stun, back out, re-engage with another stun, because stun has like barely any cooldown on Slaughter. What is the actual cooldown? It's incredibly low. Eight seconds. I was gonna say eight, but I didn't wanna Boom, get it, it wrong goes. and you guys laugh at me. Sharana! There's that Yash actually picked up by 40R. As we got a smoke from some heroes on the side of Unknown here. Four heroes. The only one not smoked up is the Slaughter. They're gonna look for a kill as they start making their way to bottom. There is the Tusk farming down here, and Eagle, well, he's found him. And now Eagle may be baiting him in, but no, he's just getting completely juked. He didn't realize where the Tusk went. It's, uh, it's a little bit deceiving when we've got the spectator view. We can see the vision from both sides. And apparently Eagle didn't have vision of the Tusk. Rock it, on. But it looked like the Tusk might have had vision of uh, Ping. This is a really uh, separated fight. The Ice Shards were blocking off some of the heroes from Unknown here. But here we go. Here's the engage. As Greedy's going to jump forward with the hook shot, but Peko forced Ass himself out of those cogs. And now Unknown. Maybe on the back foot? No, nope, maybe not, actually. We've got a buyback from Winter Wyvern as Pain. Looking like they're trying to get back in here. Slardar gets a nice stun off, but oh, he doesn't go down. He actually gets the blink off. Eagle on incredibly low HP. He will go down as a bunch of heroes have completely fallen for pain. That Slardar went down in the end to the tower. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Forty are now spinning on Serengay. Serengay will just TP on out. Jug doesn't have any way to cancel that. As greedy is in his cogs once again, Tavo attacking him, tries to back away, tries to desperately get out of the cogs, but he's going to go down as the clockwork gets that one final kill before he eventually goes down. So, in the end, Unknown loses four heroes, Pain loses three, but four effectively with the Winter Wyvern. It's actually five. Wow, I had a buyback on the Jug? I'm... Radiance Middle Tower. Oh no, that's the Aegis. That's the Aegis, right. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he didn't buy back, but yeah, that was the Aegis. And uh, yeah, we lose five heroes on the side of Pain, so it is an advantage unknown. It was looking I'll like it was a good accident. engage for unknown, but it was on the Tusk, which just has the Force Staff anyway, so he just Force Staffs himself out of the cogs. And I think maybe that was the moment where unknown just disengages. But then they kept the fighting with Pain, and Pain, frankly, I... They got out of position a lot in that team fight, and Unknown just was picking them off. Zifri jumped in with that blink dagger, got a nice crush off onto three heroes, and then he all he blinked uh, is it the power shot attack. to live, but then he eventually died to the the mid tower. He was very very close. The tower got a couple attacks off, and the creep wave I think hit him a few times. So he died in the end, but it was almost a great play from Zifri. That that stun definitely helped his team win the fight. Is greedy. Unfortunately, hook shots right into the back of Z Free. So Amaru Chen has his BKB now, down to nine seconds. Eagles actually picked up a blink dagger on the Queen of Pain.
That's actually quite interesting. That, she, that he's picked up the blink dagger. So basically he's going to be able to blink in with the blink dagger. Throw out all his uh, abilities and then blink out back to safety. And feels like that is... What does need this game? That's, that's actually quite surprising. I, I don't think this would be even the best game for that. As Ancient Apparition gets picked up, he just barely catch the end of that Winter Wyvern going down. The Z Freeze can get punched up in the air. And not trapped by the Ice Shards. He ends up on the other side of the Ice Shards, charge coming in from Tavo. The stun was coming up from the sl from the Slardar, but charge got there first. So Unknown loses a few heroes. It's a career just chilling here at the Ogre Club. And is that the completed Aghanims? Oh, it already is completed. I actually missed the completion of that. That is Pita. We'll pick up that uh, that Ogre Club and it will be Dyer's the makings of a BKB for attack. her. Glimmer Cape now picked up by the Tusk. Bordiar hasn't purchased anything since we last checked in. It's in that 2300 gold. Tava charging down to the bottom. We'll cancel. He's got drums. Since we last checked in, he's completed those. We've got four staff on flare. the clockwork. There we go. Jug, um, gyrocopter working towards a Yasha. In fact, he'll just complete that right now as we look away. Still no item progression for the Ancient Apparition since we last checked in. He's up 600 gold, but still hasn't, uh, hasn't actually purchased anything. Expect him still to be going for Midas, even though it's quite late for Midas. take a look at uh, Ancient Apparition sitting at level 9. You want to get uh, some more levels under under your belt so that you get uh, that Ice Blast leveled up. And getting a Hand of Midas actually doesn't really delay your Aghanims by much at all. Well, we got a gathering of heroes here from Unknown. Is there... Coming up to the top lane looking for a pickoff. Will they find one? 40 yard just going to spin himself back to safety, just finishes his Manta. Peko has stayed up here, he's above the tower, 40R hanging around as support comes in from Pain Gaming. Pepita and Cat are going to be coming in, but they're already diving on the top as, oh no, they actually don't catch the Tusk because he's able to Glimmer Cape and get a little bit away and now he's going to snowball forward as 40 yards already spinning on in. Tavo comes in from the side, but this is such a separated fight. And Maru Chan is going to go down to the power shot from Pepita. But hook shot is going to be great coming up from Greedy. And he had the potential to cogs three heroes there, but doesn't go for it. And he backs away. Eagle's going to get the kill on the cat, but then he's going to go down to, Petit, to Pepita. Once again, I think Pain comes out ahead. They keep their tier one tower alive. Dyer's bottom tower is under they get attack. two kills on probably the two highest value targets on unknown, and it just costs them the support. Pain definitely has unknown's number right now. Kill totals are still even, 24 a piece. We'll take a quick look at our gold graph, and it's wow, it's actually dead even. But I'd have to say that oh, it's coming down now in favor of Pain by a thousand. I have to say that Pain is, they definitely feel ahead in this game. But we do have to keep in mind that Pain's got probably the stronger early game lineup. And going forward, Unknown's greedy position four and the Slardar is going to uh, start be, start doing a lot more. Has just hit 11, so we've got level two, amplify damage. Almost a four staff on that slaughter as well. This position, uh, position five, ancient apparition still not making any kind of item progression. I don't think an Agnus is anywhere in sight in this game. We probably won't see him finish it at all, unless this go game goes really, really long. Eagle working towards an AC on the Queen of Pain. Definitely a. Uh, Bit unusual build coming up from the Queen of Pain.
eight seconds on the gyro BKB. This is this is the downside to purchasing a BKB so early in the game. As as the game goes later, that that gyrocopter is going to be sitting there with like a five second BKB going up against heroes that are just getting theirs. Which, when your carries only uh, magic immune for five seconds and the enemy carries the magic immune for tens, it's twice as long. That is. That's that is really tough to deal with. Z Free will get hit by the power shot, so he's not able to blink. But he does four staffs himself away. Now he's got his blink available. The snowball was coming out from Peko, and Tavo actually ended up in the trees. So they try to four staff him, but he's still stuck in the trees. He can just charge out, and he's going to charge to the top lane. Roche backed up, just flared by the clockwork, so unknown. Keeping tabs on Roche. And I think we may actually see Pain go for it right now. Definitely both teams recognizing that Roche is the next big target on the map right now. And unknown, they're staying together, but they're hanging out around there. Their gyrocopters, he's clearing ancients, but where are they going? They threw in the ice blast right after the clockwork flare. Nope, pain is not in there. They're just posting up around Roche. They also have vision of Roche from the sigil. As both teams just continually check Roche, but no one's actually going to uh, go to, going to go for it here. SNY picked up by the gyrocopter. What's important to note that while this standoff is happening, Radiant's actually farming. They're farming their jungle, whereas Pain is... They're really just standing there. They're not farming anything at all. They were doing the Ancients, but not right now. z Free will get charged. Not able to blink away from this or Force Staff as he's latched to a tree as Pain find the pickoff thanks to this Observer Ward. And immediately it gets pinged out by Z-Free saying there's a ward here. There's my pension. Well, we're going to have a pause and some pings were just coming out. Looks like Payne's going to make a move for Roche here with that pick off. Slowing her down for 36 seconds. Even though it's a support slaughter, I think... I don't think Unknown takes this fight. It's 4v5. It's not the biggest hero for them to lose, but still, it's going to make the team fight quite rough, and the team fights have not been going your way recently. That being said, though, if they get a really big ice blast and then they lead that up with a sonic wave or even a call down, that could very, uh, very much turn the team fight in their favor. But we are paused here, so I'm going to take a quick little break here myself and get some water. But uh, I'll be back in just a second, guys. Just going to mute. Alright, I'm back and they're back, so we're ready to resume the game. As that AC just gets finished by the Queen of Pain. And Pain is indeed going for... Uh, going for Roche here. What is Unknown doing? Grease hanging out. Is he going to go for an Aegis Steal? That would be pretty risky. Yep, just dropped his TP scroll on the ground. Roche still has quite a bit of HP. The Slaughter's already back up. He's going to TP down to the bottom tier too. Unknown is definitely going to try to engage on the end of this Roche. Winter's Curse is going to catch Eagle and the Queen of Pain is not going to go down the hook shot from the Clockwork. Going to keep the Queen of Light. 
Queen of Pain alive for a little bit longer, but Jug's gonna finish him off. Now Zifri. Also going down to that Juggernaut. The Courier even going down to the Juggernaut. Juggernaut seems to be doing everything in this team fight. But now Pepita finds a kill. Jug now spinning onto the Clockwork. He's going for him. Right click, and needs one more, but Clockwork able to force staff himself away. The Jug blinks forward. Clock bottling himself up, needs a couple more right clicks. Meanwhile, Maru-chan actually doing work over here. He gets a double before he goes down. His 40 are keeps getting pushed by those cogs. Do it with flame. And now, are we going to have a re-engage from the Clockwork here? He's waiting for his HP to get back up here with the Tranquils. He does have Hookshot available now. But everyone on the side of Pain has backed away. Both the Wind Ranger and the Juggernaut were basically within kill range for that Clockwork. Let me back away. Roche is left with just uh, just about 5,000 HP. And that was a, a very uh, a very one. Uh, very sloppy fight. There was a lot of stuff going on. Dyer's middle we had uh, is under attack. the Queen of Pain getting initiated on up here with the Winter's Curse. As, unfortunately, Eagle... I mean, he's at... He's 12, 6, and 5. In terms of his record, he's doing well. But he's just... I feel like almost playing too aggressive. Yes, he's getting the kills. And certainly getting more than... Uh, more than his deaths, but I feel like every time he goes down, it's just his team just completely crumbles as a result. Oh, pain, they've smoked up. Their smoke's gonna get popped by the Ancient Apparition, but they don't care about the Ancient Apparition. They're going after Eagle instead. Ice Blast gonna land on three. Zifri gonna jump on with the stun on Tavo. But he's Glimmer caped up right now. They can't see him. They can see him now. Amplified damage is up as the Sentry Ward gets placed. Actually, Magic Bushing. Actually, a little off the magic bush, I think. Was Searing Gate. But we're gonna have Winter's Curse getting cast on the Greedy as uh, Ancient Apparition Dyer's gets right clicked down there. And Greedy's gonna force staff himself back. He's got the um, Blade Mail up. And Zifri's gone the other way. So he's back to uh, safety. And Baru Chan was pushed in the mid lane Dyer's while all this was going on. He fallen. will get the tier 2, or at least his creeps will finish it off. But the heroes on Pain Gaming are going to go for Roche instead. Tavo going to charge forward. They're going on to Zifri. Snowball's there as well. Zifri desperately trying to get the stun off. He will get it off and then four staff over the ice shards. Just one more attack. Eight health on the Slardar, but he will get away as 40R continues to get annoyed by this clockwork cause. And we have a pause. Apparently from 40 yards, he's uh, lagging out. Well, now what's going to happen in this team fight is we've got... Oh, Jug going to keep going forward. He's going to jump on, get the Omni Slash off, but he's jumping between Greedy and Amaru Chan. We're going to have Tavo ult on in, in with the Nether Strike on the Spirit Breaker. That's going to find a kill onto the Clockwork. But now Eagles come back. He's looking to keep fighting. He's going to blink up onto the high ground. And then he's going to blink away with that second blink. He still has Sonic Wave available, but he's just going to get stunned up. He's not even going to be able to get it off. And that's just, again, just kind of how they get, the plays have been going for Eagle. He's been going super aggressive. And sometimes it's working. Sometimes it's just not. And that was an example of it not working there. And after a really long fight, Pain will take Roche. Zifri says, you know what, I'm going to come in and, and just be a nuisance before you guys get Roche down. But 40R says, I'm just going to finish off Roche. And he does so. He gets the Aegis. As we'll quickly cycle through our heroes here. Jug sitting at 4,000 gold. Pepita sitting at 3,500. Got the BKB, that's down in 9 seconds. We have to check all the charges, because who knows how many times BKBs were popped in that fight. We're going to have Tusk picking up a gem. Cat also has a Glimmer. We just checked it on 40R, so let's take a look at our, dire, or our Radiant side. 
Just the blade mail and the four staff for the clockwork. Sitting on 2,000 gold though. MKB almost finished by Umaru Chan. Just needs another javelin. But 1,000 gold from completing that. BKB down to 6 seconds. Serengay's up to 600 or 800 gold and then it drops down to 600 as he buys wards. Z Free sitting at 1300 gold, almost 1400 gold, but hasn't uh, picked up anything new since we last uh, saw him get that four staff. Eagle's probably the last one for us to cover. Hasn't picked up anything since the AC. We've just seen a lot of fighting, not a lot of gold. Uh, getting picked up. Yeah, there's gold for fighting, but not as much as if you're just sitting there farming creep waves. Oh, or, the team fights are very one-sided. Darren Gay just getting demolished by 40R. He will get the ult off in time, but it just goes off onto the Juggernaut, and then, oh goodness, this is just a disaster for Unknown. Winter's Curse is good, everything is good. Greedy's gonna go down, they're gonna lose three heroes in the end, maybe four, yeah, four. As Z3 gets right clicked down by 40R. And Pain is just running all over Unknown right now. And I'm scared to look at the gold graph. Is Eagle is actually in behind, wiping out the creep wave, and now he's going to TP back. Tava was charging him. Radiance Let's take a quick look at the gold graph, attack. and yes, this is exactly Radiance indicative of the game. Up and down, up and down, up and down, all of a sudden it's all Pain. That is, that's pretty much Radiance been the game, and now Pain takes a tier 3, and this Rax, set of Rax, is going to go down. 40 yard tries to blink the Ancient Apparition's Ice Blast, but not able, unable to do so. But A Blast still just hits two, and Eagle going down once again means that there's no way in hell Unknown is going to be able to defend here. They lose that Rax, so now they're going to go mid, hopefully try to bring down this tier two tower. They're just four here right now. The Winter Wyvern's gone back to defend bottom lane. Z3 going to blink four, stun. It's maybe a little bit risky. The tower was was down. And now Payne's gonna back. That should be should be worth noting, it just popped up. So we still got another two minutes on this Aegis. It hasn't been used in all this. So don't expect the aggression from Payne to be to be done. They're probably gonna keep pushing here. Yeah, that's Cat's going to be bringing out a mango on the Winter Wyvern. Pepita has got a regen. I, I think they just wipe the mid creep wave here and then go bottom. And take this tier 2. Which is on 69 HP. You're kind of back in a bit here. Hmm. Huh. I'm actually, I'm quite surprised by them just not pushing this middle lane uh, out past half and make it push in their favor and then just going bottom. Oh, no, they're Dyer's gonna go for this top tier one. And yeah, pain is. Wow, they're not even gonna give this up. They're just gonna glyph it. They wanna fight here instead of being on the offensive. So they're gonna fight defensively. Tava with the charge off on Eagle. The tower is gonna go down, but all the heroes from Pain are already up here. And there goes the Queen of Pain. There's now call down is gonna come out from the gyrocopter. It's not gonna hit anyone. The only one inside of it is Pepita, who had the BKB popped. As Zifri. Well, everyone's dropping their items on the game. On the ground. Good game. Well played. We'll get called. As Unknown gets run over by Pain. That was, like I said, a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. And then all of a sudden, all Pain. Just all Pain. As they just took over that game and Unknown. Well, they they struggled there for quite a while. And then eventually tapped out. Look, Pain Gaming goes down, so they finish the group at 2-1. And uh, Payne will start at 1-0. The other two teams, Team Leviathan and uh, Tisho, are going to start off at 0-1. We're going to see well, Leviathan, Tisho, and Payne finish all their games tomorrow in the three games that we're going to be casting. 
So uh, look forward to that. Those games will start at uh, an hour earlier than they started today. So these games started at 7.30 Eastern. Um, the games tomorrow will be starting at 6.30 Eastern. And we'll be leading with Leviathan versus T-Show, followed by Pain versus Leviathan, and then eventually T-Show versus Pain to close out the night. And that'll be the end of Group B. And then we're... And we've got a little bit of a, a break until our next uh, group stage matches, which won't be until December 15th. And we'll have a four-day stretch of 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. And that will cover Group D first and then in Group C. And then we'll be done the group stage and we can start moving on to the playoffs. Remember, we've got four teams in each group and the top two in each group advance. The bottom two, they're eliminated from the tournament. No double elim there. So teams need to... They've got three games, three best of ones to prove themselves that they are in the, the top two, at least in their group, to advance. And if they don't do it, that's it. You're done. No Canada Cup for you. We've got $20,000 uh, prize pool this, uh, this time around. So it's uh, Dota 2 Canada Cup's getting pretty big. But uh, that's going to do it for me tonight, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy the cast. I uh, wasn't really feeling too, uh, too well tonight. But uh, I did the best I could. <laughs> My voice is uh, feeling a little ravaged right now as well. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to recover for tomorrow night's cast. Once again, starting at 6.30. Don't be late. Um, but yeah, hit that follow button. You'll see when I go live. And you'll see, well, whenever I'm live casting anything. I'll be casting, of course. Um, tomorrow night, but I'll also be casting on Sunday for uh, the Semi Pro Cup Series, which I cast every Sunday. Um, so you can tune in for that if you care to. Um, but yeah, if you missed any of the games today, they'll be thrown up on my YouTube, uh, where I put all my archived uh, VODs. That's youtube.com slash NISCAST, and I tweet whenever I go live on uh, my Twitter account at, at NISCAST. But yeah, like I said, that's it for me tonight. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'm going to throw it to some music, and have a good night.